Richard, a very good morning to you. Very good morning to you from College Green on this busy, exciting day, Mike. Yes, it's budget day, and I fear that we're going to be assaulted in what will be the most socialist budget in living memory, an assault on hard work, an assault on jobs, and an assault on small businesses. Yeah, yeah I mean, the bulk and I've been of... joined here, Mike, by a, f a friend of yours. Oh, yeah, yes, I saw he was there earlier. Yeah, he dropped his, uh, he dropped his banner. Uh, unfortunately, but I'm just glad he's lost his uh, his loudspeaker because it's much better looking at him than listening to him. Is all I can say. Um, but uh, but anyway, we should do our best to carry on regardless. Let me ask you about the Southport situation first of all, because you know there are some people who think, and they could be wrong, uh, that this news was released last night deliberately uh, so that it would be sort of lost in the budget coverage. But of course that didn't happen because all the newspapers have got it on page one today. I asked Liz Truss. Uh, a question about what Keir Starmer would have known and when he would have known it. She said, as former Prime Minister, almost inconceivable that he would not have known those facts immediately after um, the police had discovered them. Well, I've got a question, question number eight in PMQs from 12 to 12.30. And I think the question is, are the CPS fit for purpose. I asked the Home Secretary last week about the CPS and the Independent Office for Police Conduct. I think this is quite extraordinary, the release of this information at this time. It's taken three months. The idea that they didn't know very, very soon after that horrific killing about some of these details, you have to ask, as you say, when did the Home Secretary know? When did the Prime Minister know? And why were we not told earlier? And you know, these are very serious questions that I think uh, they've got to answer. Yeah, particularly since they were locking people up for what they regarded as misinformation, uh, for posting on social media uh, comments which they regarded as um, incorrect or inflammatory uh, or indeed, you know, pointing fingers at something, you know, and I'm not going to say, I'm not going to sit here, Richard, and say that therefore there was a justification for what happened, but what I'm going to say um, is that if you leave a vacuum of information, if you don't put information out in the public domain, then it will be filled with something else. Well, that's right. And my uh, colleague and friend, Nigel Farage, was uh, given all sorts of grief and abuse by many politicians, many in the media, for asking simple questions about what we were being told, where we were being told the truth, the whole truth, based on what was yeah. known. And it's pretty clear now that, in fact, Nigel, uh, once again, was right yeah. and that we were not being told the truth. And I think there are, as I say, uh, very serious questions to ask. And you know, I, I'm afraid that any confidence that I had in the Crown Prosecution Service has now collapsed. Mm. Liz Trust there was talking about accountability. That's what I asked the Home Secretary last week. And accountability works way, both ways. It's all very well saying that we've got to be accountable, that police officers have to be accountable. Well, the leadership of the CPS mm. has to be accountable. They are failing, they're losing the public confidence, and frankly, if they don't resign, then they need to be fired. Yes. Well, Nigel was in with us last week and he was telling us that obviously reform have put in a, um, a letter to the CPS asking what's going on around the Manchester airport uh, pair who have yet still to be charged. No action taken yet on that front. Um, any update on that particular situation? At the square root of absolutely zip, zero. Uh, probably no surprise, but I think it's fair to say that if they think we're just going to go away and that we're bluffing on our proposal to run a private criminal prosecution, then frankly, they can think again. Because uh, when we get through uh, all of the current sort of activity with the budget, the Tory leadership and, uh, and the Trump election, just wait and see. Patience is a virtue. Mm, it certainly is. And will you get an opportunity in your uh, question today to put Sir Keir Starmer on the spot over any of this? Well, let's wait and see, Mike. I'm not going to uh, prejudge what I'm going to say. <laughs> I had to ask. Uh, let's wait and see. <laughs> I mean, you know. I know you did, and, and I had to reply the way I did. Nice try. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Absolutely oh, right. Mike, but I'll tell you what, but Lindsay Hoyle is not happy, though. I mean, he's been shouting and bawling um, about the fact that this budget appears to have been given away to all and sundry, you know, from the United States. And by the way, I hear there's another cabinet minister off to South America. Um, I think it's the environment secretary this time uh, who's decided that he needs to go to a climate 
climate change conference somewhere in Chile or something like that, Steve Reid. Um, so at any given time, there's at least one or two members of the cabinet abroad. Yeah, I mean, it is extraordinary. This must be the most pre-briefed budget of all time. And as I said to the Paymaster General in the House yesterday, uh, they've had 14 years to work out how the ministerial code works, and it seems that actually they haven't understood it. And they, uh, in, in a sense, what the Chancellor did, briefing about changing the rules on, on debt, that actually moved the bond markets upwards. Bond yields went up last week, which meant that the cost of mortgages went up, which means that people, frankly, uh, are paying higher bills in the future because of this pre-briefing. And it's just unacceptable. And the very least they should do is apologise. Yeah, absolutely right. I can expect an apology from Steve Bray, by the way, for standing behind you for the whole show. You can also tell him that Brexit actually, one, was worth well, it, and two, why has he hired Cat Weasel to be his uh, second in command? Yeah, I'll, I'll ask him if he'll apologise to you, Mike, because uh, <laughs> I think it's a very fair question. But I in fairness, so. he's been on good form, he's smiled. He, di he didn't join me on my yoga just before I came on air. Oh, well, <laughs> never mind. You can't have everything. Nice concrete, to see you, Richard. Mike. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, mate. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, you'd think you'd get a life or something, wouldn't you?